Ani, ni gan get him bama said in Dishna Kaz, Makwandorum, Gnoja Kaning, Nada. Also, my name is Larry Chox. I live in Brimley, Michigan, uh, and uh, I'm a member of the Sioux St. Marie tribe of Chippewa Indians. I got into building snow snakes about a year ago, and I was very lucky to be able to find the time to get in the garage and actually build some, uh, a couple snakes and try them out and redesign and redevelop them and, and, and get uh, something that, that they end up liking. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to take some of those skills I learned and, and transfer them to you today, and, and hopefully you guys find something you find valuable as well. I just wanted to make sure to say that I was so appreciative uh, of being able to go out and, and throw snakes at, uh, at Bay Mills uh, twice last year at the Northern Indigenous uh, Games and at Bay Mills' uh, fifth annual uh, Kenosha Beck uh, Championship. And I just want to make sure to continually thank all those people who go out there and make sure they, that these events are available for the public. Uh, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm very excited about the sport. I'm looking forward to hopefully this year being able to uh, participate and, uh, and, and help in making these things a, a more reality. So I am new to this, uh, but I'm looking forward to sharing with you where I'm at uh, and uh, and what I've learned. But I want to make sure that, that everyone here feels comfortable uh, doing the, their design and their work any way it is that they see fit. Uh, it's really about being creative and, and having this opportunity to experiment and, and really to be able to participate with, with, uh, with other people and do something that it's, uh, you know, it's just a, a big fun. So. Uh, that's uh, <laughs> that. So anyway, I, I wanted to get into the mini games, the little things that uh, aren't the actual throwing of the snake, but the mini games that are in the building of the snake, and, and they're out throughout the process. Um, so uh, one of the mini games is it, it, that that you can kind of view it as is uh, the game of finding the perfect wood, the wood that's going to make sense for uh, for your snow snake. Um, you know, so you may be doing research uh, if you want to into the density of wood and trying to find the most density dense wood so you can have the most mass that you're throwing down the um, uh, the track. Uh, you may be just trying to find any piece of wood that's going to work. So I, you know, going on the hunt for scrap woods, uh, for repurposed handles. Uh, maybe you're buying a, a, a wood from the store. Um, so just that that game of finding the wood is important. The game of designing and creating. Uh, cutting, rounding corners, rasping and sanding, uh, getting a design that ultimately has uh, really low friction um, and handles the variety, the the, uh, the variations in the track. Um, uh, so this is the game of making your uh, your snow snake look flashy, uh, and, and and so that's part of that is the wood burning, the painting, and the stain and finishes makes the most the, the best looking snake out on the track. Uh, there's also the game of the secret recipe uh, for your final coating, the thing that makes it slick and slide down the track and slicker than everybody else's. So, you know, what, what I use personally is polyurethane and ski wax. Or do I? Okay. Uh, so the, there's a game of finding your style of throwing, uh, what works best for your body, uh, how your style um, links back into your design, um, uh, finding the way, uh, uh, finding a way for you to keep your snake on the track and have a really good throw, and finding out how it is that you can maximize the throw, uh, uh, you know, for your style of throwing. Um, you know, there's also like a, a game of like lighthearted kind of teasing uh, uh, some smack talk between you and the other players. Some people do that, some people don't. Um, and I think the best, well, it's one of the other uh, big games is is um, Getting your snake the furthest down the track, see who can actually get the greatest distance. And but but the best thing is uh, being able to the best little game is is, is is getting out there and just being with 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 your community, being out there and uh, um, uh, have, you know forming bonds and relationship in the depths of winter uh, and and being outside and and, and that's so wonderful. So I want to make sure to encourage everyone to research and look on the internet. There's such a huge, wide variety of snow snake styles, stories, and they're all wonderful to read and hear about. Um, and, and again, I'm just uh, super appreciative of all the individuals who have built the track and, uh, and and maintain and put on events. It's just it, it's it's the best. And if you can participate in those, uh, then, then definitely do so. Um, 
so in lieu of having a track myself, you know, I've taken my family out, and once you have a snake, you get to throw it anytime you want. So uh, you know, my little, my little uh, two and a half year old will get out and he'll throw the snake, and and last year he wanted to have his own, so he made a little teeny one, and uh, and, and and that's just wonderful. Um, and, and I also wanted to just encourage people to get in the garage, experiment with their tools, with uh, uh, the wood shop, uh, find adult supervision, find help. Uh, if you can, you know, be in the garage with someone else uh, for safety and for ideas and for some camaraderie and building your snakes. Uh, and it's just a, a great experience to get out there. And, and I just hopefully hope that we, through this uh, and, and other means, are able to kind of uh, motivate more people to, to participate and, and compete in snow snake games. So uh, thank you very much. Right, this is the the first snake I built, and this is the second snake. One's got a kind of a cu cut down back, and one has a full back. The full back has got a lot more front end weight and more mass to it. Uh, here is myself and my son, and we're throwing the original snow snake, uh, and and my uh, uh, niece, and we're having some time trying practicing. Uh, here's a picture of me uh, with uh, uh, with the plaque that I won last year, and, and this here is a little video my first ever uh, snow snake throw. A lot of support from uh, the people out there. Uh, and I made this little video, and the video here is going to show uh, some slow motion of people actually throwing a snow snake out in Bay Mills. Uh, this here uh, is Webb, and he, uh, uh, you know, didn't feel like throwing, so he built a, a bow, and he decided to shoot his snow snake, uh, just saying that there's any way to uh, participate. This one, lots of power. Ooh, the accuracy was a little bit off. And you see it, it went wild and jumped off the track right away. Uh, here's a pretty good throw, but you can see with the variation of the track that you're going to have some jumps and some bumps and some ups and some downs, some left and rights. So, uh, you know, so you know, part of your snow snake design has got to overcome that. Uh, and so here we got a really decent, really good throw, full arm extension, and this snake is flying. Uh, this kid did an exceptional job uh, in this throw. So the design of the snow snake is connected to the style of the thrower and the height uh, slash arm length. And so what that's going to look like, you put the snow snake in, you extend your arm, you bend your knees, you push out. So snow snake in, bend knees, full extension, and release. Uh, once again, you bend your knees, snake in the track, full extension, release, and that's how you make the snow snake. Uh, so what we're going to see here is the snake itself in um, uh, on the table. So we're going to be able to see the curve on this side. Uh, sorry about the video quality here, but we get to see that there's quite a bit of gap underneath the snake and going in it, extending down. So only really the belly of the snake, um, roughly about the middle, uh, is actually what's touching the snow. So the least surface area as possible. And we can see the snake sweeps back up. Um, and that's ultimately what we're going to be doing is, is uh, getting a similar feel for our next snake. And so I'm going to uh, essentially trace this and um, uh, then talk about some of the, the measurements so that you have the, the ability to copy and, and paste this uh, uh, to your design to some, some extent. Uh, and so everybody gets to choose their kind of like a, um, the specific angle and the specific sweep of the of it. So what I have at the end of mine, it goes up about two and a quarter inches, uh, and that two and a quarter inches mark is where we're going to hit it with the, the table saw and ultimately take off that that entire top of the board. So we're going to do two table cost, uh, table saw cuts, um, uh, one coming this way and then one coming back up the other way. This this uh, uh, one that I'm making today is not for me; it's for my sister. So it's a different height. Uh, it's going to be a total of five foot four. I put some paper underneath this. And the paper is essentially to get an idea of, uh, so you see I got one foot, two foot, three foot, four foot, five foot, uh, five foot, five. So you get this idea of where the center is and where you're kind of starting to have sweeps come up. So you're about a foot and a half, 
when this uh, uh, from the, the the nose of this thing is where that sweeps kind of touching um, the, the belly um, so again making some marks making some measurements uh, just getting a feel for the ultimate uh, look of this thing what's it gonna look like um, and um, and so just about taking some time slowing down uh, not jumping into uh, 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 just whacking away at the thing um, and, and so just getting, getting a good concept so here we have uh, 1.5 inches up from the belly is the back so if you're gonna make that original style that I showed earlier you're gonna want to on the back end change this from 1.5 inches to 1 inch uh, with that 0.25 of an inch underneath there that's gonna give it a, a kind of a slicker uh, more flatter feel on the backside and that will carry up for a big chunk of um, the, the snake so here I'm using a T-square, uh, but you can use a straight edge, um, and essentially measuring one side and measuring the other side, uh, so so I can kind of guarantee that uh, I've got a um, you know a good cut going across. Um, and here I am just measuring the uh, or just kind of eyeing up um, the um, uh, you know the, the what I what I've transferred onto the the wood, you know just seeing hey does this make sense this will look good. Um, now I'm making some marks. You can kind of see I already put a line on there, but I'm going to darken that line up so I can see it easier with some commands. Um, and so, draw a line, the length of it. That's going to represent the very first uh, uh, sorry, table saw cut. Uh, and then you're going to see that second cut uh, that I'm going to put a line on here. And on that second cut, so again, if you, you'd want to change that to one inch above your 0.25 inches of waist, uh, for the more traditional style. This is that thicker style. I'm going for the thicker style because it's just more mass that I get to put down the uh, down the track. Uh, no. Alright, so here I'm stopping short of where that line actually intersects with the, the, the part of the snake that we're keeping. The reason why I'm stopping there is because we're cutting it with a table saw. So table saws uh, will cut, cut further into the wood and so I'm going to illustrate here that you can see uh, how much further it's going to cut from you know, where you can kind of see the table saw stick forward. So I want to stop right there so I'm not actually getting into and making any table saw marks on the, the actual uh, snake itself. And here I am setting up the, uh, the table saw. Make sure you have all of the protective eyewear and safety equipment and uh, some training and, and, and uh, you know if you don't feel comfortable using a table saw uh, you know uh, you know maybe get someone else to help with this this part um, so you're gonna see we have uh, tape measure we're gonna have uh, some safety glasses uh, <clears throat> and, and so we're just now we're setting the fence raising the blade up you're gonna see here that this blade is sticking up just a little bit above the top of the board I never like to have the, the blade stick up too far uh, just so that we can make sure that we're preventing any accidents from happening. Um, so you're going to see, if you scope down the board itself, you're going to see how that blade sticks up just a little bit. And I am using the cheapest of equipment. Uh, this is my home garage, so I, you know uh, you don't need super fancy equipment. But as a result of that, if you have an old, uh, if you, you're using a cheap table saw, you are going to want to check uh, one side of the blade and then the other side of the blade to make sure that you have a, um, uh, a nice parallel cut. Right? Uh, so I'm turning the saw on, I'm bringing the wood in, uh, and just uh, slowly, continually cutting the saw, or cutting the wood. Uh, you see that little uh, uh, knot popped out, but that's all right. That's not going to affect the ultimate look of the uh, snow snake. Uh, you're also going to see that this wood wasn't 100% supported, so I put an uh, extra little table in here uh, so that uh, I was making sure that I was able to be able to transfer the weight of that board um, and not have any accidents. Uh, um, you know, you don't want kickback, and so ultimately if you can support the other end, that helps out quite a bit. Also, you know, safety, uh, you know, use one of the, the, the push sticks. Uh, you can either make your own or buy one. 
and finally what we're seeing here is uh, that that I'm waiting for that uh, blade to come to a complete stop before removing any of the blood. You know, wait till it slows down, then get your piece, and get ready for your second cut. Now again, this is where I'm doing an inch and a half, but you would be doing an inch if you're doing the, the more traditional look. And, um, uh, and that does make a much lighter uh, uh, snake, and I think if you are kind of like a, a lighter class of thrower, that might be the, the optimal uh, design for you. But uh, I'm going to make mine just a little bit thicker, and so we're going to see uh, us cut it, making that second cut, and removing the back waist uh, off the, the back of the snake. And we're getting pretty close to where I'm going to stop. Lifting the board up and off, letting the blade come to a stop. Okay. Uh, then I need to remove that back uh, waist that we had just cut. So I'm taking the saw. Uh, I got a Japanese bull saw that I just used, but you can use whatever kind of saw you, that you'd like. And so we see that there's that now. There's that uh, the the top. Uh, the, the back of the snake, the, the waist needs to come off. Uh, and the harder the wood, the harder it is to saw. So I've got a jigsaw. It's a brand new uh, blade in here, and it is barely, barely cutting this thing. Um, but so let's speed it up <laughs> and go through uh, uh, seeing this waist be removed. I'm going to also switch from um, uh, just to show that you can use multiple tools. Um, here I'm using the uh, Japanese pole saw again. Um, uh, I think it was you know, maybe like uh, twenty or thirty dollars, um, and I know you can get one for twenty bucks. Um, and and it's actually moving quite a bit of the material uh, a lot faster than the, the jigsaw was. Um, uh, it is a little bit tiring though, uh, but it's it, it it it's good for you. Um, so, and I think also in this part here, you can see that it, it, I'm able to do a nice sweep up uh, to get that curve of the snow snake that I was looking for. And uh, so back to the jigsaw, give him some more cuts. And ultimately removing the top waist. Um, and I think what we're gonna do here is switch and come around from uh, the front side and cut up on the, the nose of the snake and make that connection and get that piece off. So that's the only piece you really have to do uh, with cutting. The rest of it could be done with an axe if you feel comfortable using an axe. If you know you've uh, uh, you know, spent your childhood chopping wood, uh, you're gonna feel a little more comfortable. If you don't feel comfortable, don't you know? Don't use an axe. Um, but I, I'm not speeding up the footage of the um, uh, of the, the axe uh, chopping here uh, because just to show how fast it, it, it actually is, you can actually remove quite a bit of wood in a very short amount of time. Um, now, I am not a super expert <laughs> axe chopper uh, person. I, you know, I have made one handle that turned out pretty good for uh, for a, a broad axe that I was uh, refurbishing. But you know, I don't have if you're don't try and pick up any axe uh, uh, carving skills from me, uh, but you can just see that, that 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 even though my technique might be bad, the uh, I, I am able to actually get the job done, move the wood out, and have it. Uh, I'm, I'm looking over top of the piece so I can see that uh, um, that pencil line, and it's going to be a little bit. Oh, I'm taking a little break there. Uh, you can, it, and it's and it's going to be a little bit easier if you're not chopping uh, so the camera can see exactly what you're doing here. Um, so that way you give a little more uh, ability to move your piece around and get in a very comfortable spot for chopping. Um, but this worked. It did the trick. And there is something I think therapeutic and wonderful about uh, shaping wood with an axe. Uh, it just has a really good feel and um, uh, if it's something that, that, that you would like to do, you can, but also you can just stick with the saw. Uh, you can stick with, a, uh, you know, do a jigsaw, you know, and again, the softer the wood that you end up using. If you were doing, making pine, the, the, the jigsaw would just fly right through the job. 
Um, okay, so now we can kind of see we're getting that basic shape down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a little bit more off the nose here. Um, but it's ultimately going to produce, um, you know, roughly the, the piece that we're looking for. You can see, all right, that's the, that's the shape of a snow snake. Uh, that's the shape of, especially, you know, the style that I'm making, uh, which is a little more squarish, a little more boxish than, than some. Uh, you know, there's a lot of snakes that are very round, um, but I like mine to be a little more flatter. Uh, okay, so this right here, it's out of focus, but it's a spoke shave. Uh, you can get that for $17 on Amazon, uh, you know, and be at your place in, you know, the next three days. Uh, and the spoke shave uh, does a good job of essentially removing uh, a lot of the waste. And, and but you're going to be using the spoke shave quite a bit. Uh, and you're going to see as I'm fast forwarding through this. Um, but the smoother uh, you get your piece, the easier or the more effective it is the spoke shave actually is. And you're, starting, you're going to start seeing big, long strands. So you can see that uh, we're starting to uh, get some longer strands off of the cut. Uh, we're getting smoother and smoother, and that makes the spoke shave more and more effective. And you're going to start seeing some really good uh, wood curls uh, shoot out of the spoke shave. Uh, again, it's just a lot of uh, work in the spoke shave uh, and combination of working the spoke shave plus working the rasp, uh, which we'll see in a little bit. But uh, And so you're standing up, you're, you're kind of putting your back into this, you're getting... Uh, a lot of good chunks and a lot of good material removed uh, and really starting to get a nice shape to your snake. But the deal is you can't always 100% trust uh, uh, that you're doing uh, uh, a level job. Um, oh, and you're going to see here, I'm doing this uh, thing where I'm, uh, and I'm, I'm new to smoke shapes as well, uh, but essentially I'm going forward and backwards trying to clear the, uh, the shave chamber and then uh, that seems to be working and I'm getting quite about uh, a bit of material. And if you notice, I am putting a little bit of preference on this side uh, and, and a lot of material is coming off and I feel happy about that. Uh, but ultimately it's not making um, a very even uh, thing here. So again, we'll, we'll take a look. Uh, when you're wood carving or you're doing anything work, uh, uh, wood, you, you just kind of got to continually uh, take a look and make adjustments and see how it is you're doing. So, um, cleaning out some of the shavings. A little extra speed there. And let's go take a look. Let's see how we did. Well, it's lopsided. <laughs> it's, 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 it, it's shaved down pretty good on, on this edge over here. But on this side, it's real heavy. Uh, you know, and so... Uh, so kind of like back to the drawing board. Let's make a uh, let's make some changes. Oh, and I, and I didn't mention this earlier. If you're ever spoke shaving, uh, 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 use a um, uh, use gloves. You know, you got to have gloves. You got to have uh, protection stuff. You, you know, you can easily get a real long sliver, uh, especially when those edges are, are still sh uh, sharp. You know, as we go, the the, the snakes get smoother and smoother. But when it starts off, you know, there's some pretty rough, rough edges. Uh, and this looks like it's a... Uh, oh, I was going to mention here is uh, if you use some sandpaper when you're eyeing things up, it takes off some of the uh, um, uh, the edges and it lets you get a real good look at uh, how it's turning out. So, take off the gloves. Or we're going to move the camera down and take a look to see how we're doing now. All right, that's a much uh, uh, more symmetrical looking uh, uh, back end of the snow snake. Uh, and so now we're going to, what I did was I, fl I, I flipped the, um, uh, the snake around in the vise. And, uh, and now we have the kind of the, the, the front chin of the, of the snake. Uh, and that's where we're removing some material. And this actually goes pretty quickly. Um, and I'm putting my foot on the uh, the bench so that I can get some good strong poles, and that got smooth in really you know a, a very short amount of time. Uh, that's that size pretty much ready to go for for standing. So 
we gotta flip around. We gotta flip the uh, the snake around quite a few times to get the different angles and make sure that we're uh, uh, hitting all the different parts that we need to, and then rounding the corners. And so now this is the the kind of like the the top back head of the of the snake. I'm starting off with a with a real cheap rasp. I think I got a set of these uh, rasps for like ten bucks. Um, and because the spoke shave works so much better when it's uh, when it's somewhat smooth, uh, I, I thought to myself, well, let's just rasp it down a little bit, and then we'll have a better shot when we start our spoke shave. All right, so now we're sitting back down, and let's take see what we get. All right, we're actually getting some pretty decent cuts right off the get. Uh, you know, once we get rid of the, the sticking spots, it makes it a lot easier. And so here I am rounding the corners, uh, getting quite a bit of um, material gone, and getting that kind of basic shape uh, knocked out. Hit some sandpaper. Uh, and then now we're hitting the chin of the snake. The bottom side. And this is the part that's very important because that's going to be the part that's running up against uh, the, the snow, you know. Uh, and so we want that to be as smooth as possible. We want the whole thing to be as smooth as possible. Um, but have a really good, nice sweep. Uh, so when it hits the variations in the track, it kind of uh, goes along pretty well. So now you can see the, the new snake versus uh, last year's snake. And, uh, and you can see it's the, the general shapes. Um, uh, about right, so you can see um, I want to put a little bit of a curve on the face uh, This one doesn't have that yet. I wish I would have taken the axe and chopped that down a little bit uh, The belt sander is good, but it doesn't take a, a lot off as fast as you think it would Especially hardwood. Oh, always wear earring protection when using a, a belt sander. They're so loud If you're uh, running it for just a couple minutes without hearing protection, you're gonna hear this kind of uh, a ringing uh, in your ears uh, you can see I'm making a, a slight adjustment uh, to the belt sander so that the belt uh, is, is, is lined up and it's not tracking oddly. And they put a little adjuster on it. Um, I'm going to also note that this is the second from the bottom of the line belt sanders. Uh, what you're going to want to do is get that second one. Because the second one comes with these little clamps. It lets you take a handheld belt sander, which is fairly cheap things, like $50 or so. And clamp, turn it upside down, and clamp it to your uh, workspace. And what you're going to see here is I'm just rounding edges, and we're going to do a lot of rounding. Uh, the the belt sander, you know, you kind of expect 45 minutes to an hour on the belt sander itself. Uh, it takes a lot of sanding. Uh, the the more imperfections that you have prior to this stage. Uh, the, the more sanding you end up doing. And so I'm kind of rounding uh, and I'm trying to roll things and, and, and keep it moving so that I'm not sticking on any place uh, too long. Uh, oh, I also have the cheapest uh, uh, old uh, uh, belts that the, the glue is starting to stick. But I'm you know, going through them, uh, getting those out, and then I can go to my, my newer uh, uh, sandpaper. So I broke two. Uh, and then finally got the uh, the good one out um, and uh, yeah and again you, now you're, you're going up the body you're trying to essentially um, not take too much off anywhere at, at any one point in time because it's, it's, it's a flat surface and you want to just be able to slowly work up and down the front the back the sides uh, all the angles and just change it around if at some point in time you say hey you know what I really wish I would have taken off some more material before hitting up the belt sander, go ahead, reclamp uh, your piece, and take off a little bit more material. You take it off the spoke shave with the axe, um, uh, whatever it is you feel comfortable with. Uh, so if you're not getting the, the exact, there's no, no point in time where you can't just go back and, and say, hey, I want to take off more material. Uh, the only thing that you, you can't go back from is when you accidentally have taken off too much material. Uh, there's no uh, <laughs> there's no fix in that. Um, but for the most part, just kind of, um, you know, you have uh, uh, an ability to go and fix mistakes. And so you see you got the, the shape now more rounded, and that's going to be easier on uh, the next steps of the bell sander. All right. So we're going to 
and unclamp that piece. Bring it back to the belt sander. And you know, every round of sanding is just gonna just keep on improving it. Uh, you know, when I stopped, I you know, I probably could have done another half hour worth of sanding and 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 and, and, and still I felt better about it. Uh, you can really never sand uh, too much, um, it, you know, but it's but you're gonna see I'm speeding this up and uh. Just really, just trying to get it as smooth as possible. Because that'll ultimately, you know, make it make it uh, uh, look better and make it glide better in the uh, in the snow. And again, it's a lot of noise, uh, so we're wear hearing protection as much as possible. I mean, a hundred percent of the time. Oh, see, there you go with the, the, the full volume. It's, it's it's horrible. <laughs> now, if you have a full shop where you have a big sander and then a big, uh, um, uh, you know, a better you know better uh, scroll saws or, or uh, um, just better equipment, and this whole thing can go a lot faster. Uh, but you can also do it with some pretty basic stuff, and, and even the stuff that I'm using here, you don't really need all of it. Um, you know, you can uh, you can make a snake out of um, uh, you know existing uh, round stock that you find, um, whether that's the handle of, uh, of, of of something or it's uh, um, something else that you found that you modified. There's just uh, so many different options out there. On, 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 and how your, your snake ultimately uh, will look and feel. So I just want to make sure everyone feels comfortable in, you know, taking that time to explore what's best for them. Uh, but also, you know, be able to see this and say, hey, if I wanted to emulate this particular way, here's, here's the way in which I do that. So there's that little break where I'm, I'm looking at the piece and stopping and saying, well, what do I need to do next? What, what's the next step of, uh, of sanding? Uh, and ultimately, you, you get it sanded pretty good with the belt sander, and you need to move to a, a different grit. Uh, and so I'm doing some hand sanding here, uh, starting off with a 60 grit, uh, and knocking out uh, uh, some more variation. Uh, the hand gets to kind of fit around uh, the, the material, and you get to kind of like... Uh, just give it another, uh, I guess like a run of, of, of getting smoother and more level across the, the, the various surfaces, or more even. Um, so I'm going to speed this up. And you can spend as much time as you want on sanding, and I'm going through different uh, uh, different grits. Uh, you know, the, the, the 60, the 100, the 240, um, and ultimately we'll end up using some steel wool on it. Uh, for that that final uh, final pass, uh, and if you're looking for steel wool, you can get it for a couple bucks uh, for a bag of it. And you're trying to find uh, it'll be three zeros uh, triple ot, uh, uh, steel wool, and that's going to give you the best um, a kind of final finish with uh, with the steel wool. Okay, so oh, I think I'm hitting up a, a slightly finer sandpaper in this. Uh, I'm still, so I'm still sanding, and again, you're, you, you, after you put this much work into it, you you really want to make sure your sanding is is, is done well. So, um, I put more and more sanding on, and getting finer and finer grits. And it's starting to look pretty good, and you know, uh, also sanding the backside. That part's not going to hit the snow, but you know, ultimately you want something that has a good feel in your hand, because you're going to pass your snake around. And, some and, and it's you just want it to be smooth all over. Uh, oh, there's my kid coming in. He uh, brought me a drink. It was very nice of him. And so I think I'm gonna get the camera and move it around. There's my dog for a second. And okay, now I'm moving on to the steel wall. And uh, get the 
this, this fuel bowl, and this makes a really nice finish on the end of it. You can almost see like a sheen change in the camera. Uh, you know, it's not the best picture, but you can kind of see that hey, this, is, this is starting to look better, starting to improve. So now we've got the good finish on there. We're feeling pretty good about it. It's looking good. Uh, it's that shape. It's the feel. It's the it's, it's everything that we want. So now let's start getting into some of that more of the uh, the um, the little aesthetics things. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do here is start uh, drawing on it, uh, making the kind of the general uh, look of what the snake's going to look like. And um, so I get a pencil. I'm going to draw one eye. I think it roughly looks good right around there. And uh, and what I want to do is get some symmetry going. So the one eye should be roughly aligned with each other. Uh, and it's a, and it's a little hard to do unless you make uh, um, some lines on your uh, on your piece. And, and it really doesn't matter because all you can you write on the pencil, this will all be sanded off at a later point in time. Uh, so a line going across, and then a line will eventually be going uh, lengthwise. Uh, again, just so that you can have a little bit of symmetry in your design. It doesn't need to be perfect. Uh, and now you can make this thing whatever you want it to. I want to have it have that kind of snake look. Uh, uh, so that's what I'll be doing is, is doing a, a snake feel just like the, the, the one from last year. But if you wanted to make this thing look like a train or uh, you want to, uh, uh, you know, uh, draw a picture of a moose on there or whatever, whatever you want to do, it's your design. If you want to put stripes on there, if you want to, um, uh, there was a guy last year who really made his look good. He, he used a kind of a lure technique by putting some fishnet stockings over his uh, snake and then spray painting uh, over the fishnet stockings, and then it had the nice scale look um, <clears throat> that came through. And when he pulled the, the the stockings off, it it left that nice. Um, uh, Kind of little, little, it had that snake skin kind of look to it, um, and so that's that's one way to do it. And so I'm I'm putting this pencil on here so that I can carve it in a little bit. Um, and right now I'm putting some detail around the eyes that I ultimately do not end up using. Um, I wanted to ha have something that was a little simpler. Uh, was running low on time when I was making this, so I, I wanted to not. Uh, Put in a tremendous amount of uh, uh, extra detail, just enough to to get the look of the snake and get it to um, to get where I want it to be. And again, this is going to be your art piece. You can choose to do no. No, you know nothing on there whatsoever and just do bare wood that is a hundred percent fine you may want to, to paint the whole uh, snake a, a, a color you may want to you know do designs or patterns um, or pictures and it's just your opportunity to be as creative as possible the snake itself you know there's quite a very bit of variation in the the and how the snake can come out the length the the the, the, the shape the uh, the type of material but there is zero limitation on your design. You can make your design uh, any way that you see fit. Uh, and so just be as creative as, as, as you want to be. So I, what I've got here is uh, I got a, uh, maybe like a $40 rotary tool from Harbor Freight. Um, I got some tape on the front of it because it's not the best design as far as safety for your hands. Um, but uh, you can see I, this will be loud for a little bit, but uh, we're going to start carving some scales. And I'm just using the edge of that bit to kind of uh, move some of that waste wood out of there. If you end up using... Oh, wait for that. 
if you end up using power tools, just try to pick some uh, pick a style of uh, so you can see like I'm making the same mark again and again and again. It's that same edge of the thing, same curves. So try and do something repetitive so you can get a similar look and feel across all of your your cuts. Um, and I am you know again with all the stuff I'm an, I'm a novice and uh, and just trying these things out and exploring and finding out what's gonna work you know well for me uh, so once I made those actual cuts uh, you can see again here I am making a cut but that cut is using the edge of the uh, uh, of the Dremel bit uh, and what I want to do is round that off so here I'm doing a flattening thing so taking off the, the burrs but then ultimately I'll use a little bit more of the edge of this thing to pull off uh, some of that that materials. Maybe I don't know if you call that a chamfer, but essentially round these out a little bit so they don't look so so hard cut. Um, and and so you're gonna kind of see what I'm doing there using that that side of the Dremel of the rotary tool. Again, if you choose to carve it, that's uh, uh, I, some people I think would, are likely going to be carving with uh, uh, maybe hand chisels. Um, uh, I have tried hand chisels before, and uh, I do not have the skill. But uh, uh, you know, try and find someone out there if you're interested in getting into wood carving. You know, uh, find find a YouTube video, find a mentor, find somebody who can help get you. Uh, the, you know the just bump you up in the carving skills and then you know just take time to practice and, and, and get better at it um, that's something I'm looking forward to doing but just I'm, I'm not there yet so all right well that's the general look that's uh that's as much carving as I'm gonna do I got some nose holes got some eyes got a couple scales um, and those will pop out later uh, I'm gonna uh, uh, darken all that up in a little bit so you'll be able to see it from a distance. Uh, one of the things I think that also needs to happen is a little bit of sanding before we move on to the next stage because that, that whole process left a lot of rough edges that can all be smoothed down pretty quickly. Let's look at some sandpaper here. steel wool and now I can get out my wood burner uh, and so <laughs> as, I've, as I've said with a lot of a lot of these individual steps I am a novice uh, I I'm not 100% sure if this is the worst possible wood burner you can get I found it in a box in my garage it does not seem to be doing an optimal job or maybe I'm just not good at using wood burners um, <laughs> I'm sure it's a uh, um, a lower quality one but uh, as you go through this and I'm trying and I'm, and I'm doing a decent job but uh, I ultimately do not like the um, the results I get from the wood burner um, so I'm gonna need to kind of uh, stop and reassess and say is this what I want to do going forward because um, you know it, it just didn't have that the, the feel I wanted it to um, I'm sanding it off and Taking a look and getting all the different pieces, uh, uh, that all the little scores, uh, uh, wood burnt. And, it, and technically, it, it is wood burned in there, but it doesn't look right to me. It doesn't look nice and dark. Uh, and, you know, again, that could just be it's a lower powered uh, wood burner. Um, and, and really, just I, I don't have a lot of uh, skills with that particular uh, piece of equipment. So, there it is next to last year's. And it looks all right, it looks decent, but uh, I think what we're gonna end up doing is uh, fixing it with some paint. Uh, so talking about the design on the back, uh, I'm just gonna use a pencil and I'm gonna sketch what it is that I ultimately gonna paint and and seal in uh, with urethane later. Um, so 
I, I like the design that I had last year, so I'm going to kind of make something similar to that, a, 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 a Woodlands floral uh, that has, um, uh, you know, various elements in it that I want to uh, capture and, and, and put on there. And again, this is going to be a, a gift for my sister, so I want to make sure that it's, you know, nice and appealing and looks good and uh, something that, that, uh, that, that she would want to uh, uh, bring to the snow snack tra uh, track. Snow snake track. So you can see the design, the basic designs coming out. Uh, looks very similar to the, the, the previous year. Uh, but the previous year I didn't really have any color in there and I wanted to add that this year was get some, uh, make it a little more flashy. So I'm just getting some just regular uh, uh, um, paints uh, and, 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 and just uh, acrylic paints and just applying some color and painting it up and doing my best to color uh, to cover the, the pencil line so they don't show up uh, in the end. And you're going to see the progress as it comes along here. And again, whatever you guys want to put on yours, that's, uh, that's going to be the best choice. Paint little flowers, uh, and little berries, and You know, every step of this, even the harder steps where you're running a spoke shave or you're sanding, it's all very um, relaxing. You know, you just to get to take your time and slow down and be in your garage and do something that is, you know, that, that it's rewarding and, you know, comes out, you know, looking like something that you can be proud of um, and something that's going to allow you to participate, you know, in games with with. with you know, people in your community and, uh, and have something to talk about. And, uh, so just enjoy that time that you get to, you know, either you're making this by yourself or, or with, uh, a member of your family. Um, you know, it's the creation is like a huge rewarding part of this whole thing. Um, sorry. So now we can see the painted snake next to last year's snake. And, um, I think it turned out pretty decent, you know, uh, maybe not the best paint job, but it was, but it looks good. You know, that, that looks like a solid snow snake. So, uh, the next thing we need to do is get some sort of a, a gloss finish on this thing. Keep all that protected so it's not wearing off right away. Uh, so it looks good throughout the season. Um, so in order to do that, I think what we're going to need to do is hang this piece up. So I pre-drill a hole in the end of the snake and I'm putting in a little brass uh, screw uh, and that's going to let me hang it up and uh, apply some urethane. All right, so what we've done is we've hung it by the hook up to the ceiling um, and now uh, it's ready to be uh, urethaned. Um, so what we also have is, uh, it's probably not showing on the camera, but I have some paper on the ground and that paper's going to catch any of the drips from the urethane. Uh, and I've kind of stacked the paper up so that there's, uh, so it doesn't get through there and get my floor all gross. Um, so, and here I am urethaning it and, uh, just bringing some coats over it. I've spent a little bit of extra detail, uh, because, uh, one of the, uh, the spots I'm cleaning up there, uh, wasn't 100% dry on the acrylic paint. Uh, I was kind of rushing, and uh, just one little spot uh, had a little spot where it, was, where it started to uh, run when I hit it with the uh, acrylic. So I just fixed that up and uh, put some more on it after a while. Uh, and then so essentially now this is going to sit here for eight hours uh, until the urethane is, I don't know if it needs to be exactly eight hours, but nighttime. So let it dry overnight. Um, and then once it dries, it's going to have, uh, the urethane is pretty self-leveling, but it does have... Uh, some little bits of drips and stuff that get stuck in there. So what we'll end up doing is hitting that again with the steel wool. Uh, so here we are the next morning. I'm going to get some steel wool uh, to take, knock down any little imperfections in the urethane. Uh, really focusing mostly on the bottom, the running uh, spot. Uh, we'll do two coats of the urethane. Uh, so that means uh, do the sand, hang it back up, uh, and again, the sand with the, the steel wool. Um, hang it back up, do another coat of urethane, let it sit for another day, 
and then hit it with the steel wool again. And once that uh, has been gone over twice, and that's that's going to be pretty good. You might want to touch it up next season, but that's gonna that's gonna be all the the urethane um, that you need. This particular urethane I got here is is for inside because that's the urethane I had <laughs> laying around in my garage. Um, so you can go and get something that's uh, uh, you know something in the, the twelve thirteen dollar range can of uh, uh, urethane uh, from the store, or you can just uh, if you have some you know leftover supplies from some other project use it up you know uh and so the, the once the urethane's on there and you got the the um everything right then it's going to be about putting uh some sort of uh little extra bit on there so uh you could use ski wax uh like i said earlier um or if you don't have ski wax you find something else that's slick um just uh you caught my eye in the garage yeah, i have um these wipes uh, for um, uh, Rain-X wipes. And so uh, I just, you, so you just take some Rain-X wipes, wipe the bottom of the snake, that's gonna be, you know, slick enough. Uh, if you wanna go and pick up some, some ski wax, it's a little bit more uh, expensive. Uh, but if you already have skis and, uh, you know, it's something that you're gonna wanna uh, have anyway, so then you can slick it up. And that covers essentially how to do the coating. This thing is ready to, I mean, it's ready to be tested. Um, and there, and, and, and it looks good, and it's ready for the, uh, to be uh, to be tested and then to be gifted. Um, and uh, the only thing we're missing is the snow. It's, uh, you know, it's December 9th, and there's no snow. Um, you know, way up in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, uh, and that just, it seems a little silly. But, it, but, um, but this thing's it's it's good, so I hope you guys enjoyed the kind of how-to process. Uh, I wanted to just make sure to take an opportunity to thank you and, and say good luck on building your own uh, Ojibwe snow snakes. Uh, you can use you know this method, a modified method, whatever uh, you feel uh, is best for you. And um, and what I want to do is also make sure to uh, uh, show you guys my 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 test run. So. Let me pop that up open real quick. Uh, this is me yeah, this the morning. Snakes from last year, the one we won with last year, and the one we just made, the slightly heavier version. We're going to see how they do, even though we have no snow. And next one, the dog might get this one. further. <laughs> so. Like I said, there significantly further. It's a success. Uh, uh, if you guys have any questions, you know when I put the the YouTube video up, comment on the on the video. Uh, if you have any uh, references or sources or anything that you want other people to see, put those in the comments too. Uh, you know, make sure that that uh, that you take this information and if you have the ability to share it with other people, share the video uh, or pick up what you need to from the video and teach other people how to make snow snakes. Um, it's something that I think is, uh, uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it's just, it, I think it's a very important and very fun uh, community activity. Uh, and hopefully you have as much fun making the snake as you do throwing the snake. But with that, I just want to say thank you. Uh, uh, miigwech for attending and uh, uh, everybody have a wonderful day. Thank you. We have the snow snakes from last year, the one that we won with last year, and the one we just made, the slightly heavier version. We're going to see how they do, even though we have no snow. The dog might get the Significantly further.